All right, in this video, I'm going to give you some pointers on applying a pressure bandage to the hock. Um, it's one of the trickier spots on the horse's leg to bandage and to get the bandage to stay in place. Um, but unfortunately, it's also one of the most common places for the horse to uh, sustain an injury. So we wind up putting a bandage on it a fair amount. So if you watch the video on our, our regular pressure bandage, it's very similar to the layers that we're going to put on there. Um, we're going to start with some sort of a non-stick dressing applied to the wound. So, the one that we like to use here is called the telfa, so we put the shiny side of the telfa to the wound and then we just hold it on in place with some conform gauze, some nice white gauze that just lays on top of there. So you'll find it helpful if your horse has a nice long tail to tie it up in a knot like we've done with her tail. That just keeps it up and out of your way as you go um, around the limb with your bandage and keeps you from getting the hair stuck in it. So, so again, most of the time the wounds are on the face of the hawk, so you'd wind up putting your telfa um, on the front of the hawk there. And then you just hold it in place with the white gauze. One of the most common complications we get with bandaging the hawk area is pressure sores on the face of the hawk. So you do want to uh, be careful as you're bandaging that. And I'm going to show you a few tips as we go on, on trying to prevent getting pressure sores over the point of the hawk. But for this layer, we're essentially just trying to get our nonstick dressing and any sort of other dressings that we've put on the wound to stay in place while we put our other layers of the bandage on. So then over top of this, um, we'll, we'll put our same cotton layer. And if you have started to get a pressure sore of any um, sort over the point of the hawk, uh, we'll often use what we call a donut. So a donut you can make out of some nice uh, felt material, and this is actually just an old uh, saddle pad that we've used and cut up. As you can see, we've taken quite a few pieces out of it already. Um, but you would essentially just cut the shape of a donut, so with a hole in the middle, that you can then place over top of the point of the hawk to give it some pressure relief if needed. Um, so usually you would put that layer on next and hold it in place with some white gauze as well before you put your, your pressure layer on. So the next thing you want to make sure is when you put your, your cotton on there, your, your sheet cotton layer, which is your absorbency, that you put it on high enough um, above the hock. If you start too low down here, it's really common that that bandage is just going to slip down. So you want to give it nice even width on either side of the, the hock joint, uh, top and bottom. And then you just lay that on around the leg. And take care not to get any big kinks or bends in it, like so. And then we'll go to our um, brown gauze or our cling gauze. And this is the, the layer that I like to put the most pressure on. I really like this cling because you can't get it too tight. It doesn't snug up, but it allows you to put a nice even pressure from top to bottom. So I usually start that at the top and once it's seated on itself like so, then I start applying pressure. And I typically pull as I'm coming across the front of the leg and then just lay the gauze down as I come across the back. I don't want to put pressure on all the way around. So now, if you watch how I bandage as I get over the point of the hawk, I'm going to do what's a, a, called a modified uh, figure eight, essentially. So I'm going to try and avoid putting any pressure over the point of the hawk. If you do wind up getting pressure there, it's not the end of the world, but I would usually just take some scissors or something and cut it so that there's no pressure um, right over that region. So you'll see as I come across that I'm actually going to come right down and go underneath the point of the hawk and go around the layer and then I'm going to come back up and I've essentially created a figure eight around the leg there and then I'm going to come back down below. So I haven't applied any pressure to that area there but I've got good even coverage across the front. And I'll come all the way to the bottom of my cotton, applying nice good pressure all the way down, and then sneak back up above the point of the hock there again as I come back up the leg. And then over top of your cling, again if you watch the, the pressure bandage video you'll know that we're going to put the vet wrap next. So the vet wrap is a really nice handy dressing um, bandage layer that actually sticks to itself. So it's really helpful to have in your first aid kit or for when you're um, dealing with a wound. So again, I'm going to start that at the top, stick it on itself and seat itself, and then I'm going to start applying pressure as I come down. And I put a decent amount on the vet wrap. I pull it until it is snug so there's no more um, uh, there's no more stretch to it. Stretch it tight and then lay it down and just pull it as I come across the back. And then same thing as I did with my brown gauze, I'm going to try and avoid pressure right over the point of the hawk 
So I'm going to come down and create what's known as a figure eight. So I've gone around the bottom and back around the top, like so, so that there's no pressure there. And then to finish it off, one thing that'll help it stick to the hair up top and down below is to apply this uh, light class, which is the really sticky on one side, not sticky on the other side. And I'll put that at the bottom, at the top. And then over the point of the hawk that I've left over just to seal it up. And there you go. You have a bandage that hopefully will stay in place and keep that wound protected.